Welcome to this talk, um, and thank you uh, to have uh, skipped a part of the lunch for coming here. <clears throat> um, I've put some buzzwords to attract you in this room uh, during lunch, and uh, some buzzwords are not hype anymore, like middleware, but RESTful is at its uh, peak today, and uh, Vertex is quite a young technology, but it's uh, establishing itself. So, <clears throat> Vertex, why Vertex? Uh, it is a reactive toolkit. It is a, a toolkit to build reactive application on the, on the JVM. And what is interesting with this kind of reactive toolkits, with these reactive um, technologies, they rely on non-blocking IOs most of the time, and you have less threats you need less threads to process your, um, your data or your um, uh, request events. So you have basically one thread that is processing an event loop, receiving events on one side, and delegating the work to your code, and your code process uh, that and also produces events. So this way, you actually have very few threads in your application. And you don't have the big thread pools, and your scalability is better. Actually, in your process, you will not have only one thread. You will have as many threads you have uh, processor cores. You want to uh, full leverage your, uh, your processing power. So you will have uh, as many as threads are your uh, processor cores. And between your, uh, your different parts of the application in your Vertex application, uh, these different parts will communicate through an event bus. So Vertex provides this event bus. That you can do publish, subscribe, or point-to-point uh, -point communication. And this is the way uh, the different parts in a, class, in a Vertex application work, the communication. Uh, this is fully asynchronous. And... Uh, <clears throat> You have, with another thing about the threads, your code is always uh, processed by only one thread. So you don't have to worry about uh, thread safety in your own code and in your um, and, uh, concurrence, concurrency issues. You are guaranteed that there is only one, always the same thread in these uh, event loops, always the same thread that process your, your code. And your code, you will instantiate your code multiple times to scale. Inside one process, but also across your cluster. So you can have uh, scale horizontally this way, and this even bus uh, spans the cluster nodes. So this is the way also to communicate across the different uh, part of your application. So these features, so non-blocking, uh, a few, few threads, the cluster capabilities, are uh, key points for us uh, to have chosen Vertex at the time. This is quite uh, some years ago now. And this is for the, one of the core business of the Swiss Post. Uh, is actually parcel delivery. So uh, you have a postman carrying parcels at home. And we developed a, a, a new generation of uh, scanners that the postman carries. And the postman uh, scan the, the parcels at every um, step of the delivery process. And we have a new generation for these uh, scanners and the backend system. Um, actually, all these scans, all this information flows into the data center at the Swiss Post. So we need communication there. And we have many thousands of scanners uh, on the field every day. And we need so to process hundreds of requests per second. So for example, around December, we have 5 million uh, requests per day. So we need here a uh, server, a communication server, that is able to process all this load and to deal with uh, special aspects of the connectivity with devices, they can 
the connectivity can be bad and the, the connection can, can uh, be uh, too long, longer as, uh, as expected. Another use case um, <clears throat> is the, the, the field of uh, uh, transport at the Swiss Post, the post buses, post auto. Inside uh, the vehicles, we have a computer, which actually uh, deals with a lot of different devices inside, inside uh, the bus. And uh, all these devices are operated in a microservice architecture. And we also need here something that integrates these different systems um, inside the vehicle. And of course, we also have uh, connectivity, con connection needs uh, with the data center at the Swiss Post. So uh, we need here communication with them. And for the numbers, we have uh, between 2,000 uh, and 3,000 uh, vehicles on the streets every day. And so here we, all, we will also have many, several, uh, several hundred requests per second because the, every vehicle will flow every few seconds the, the, the GPS position uh, to the data center. So it is a continuous load of, uh, of requests there as well. So we see that we have these three communications, three needs of communication servers for integrating uh, in, a, in, a, in a performant way our, um, our different clients, microservice uh, backends, and so on. So we built a middleware on top of Vertex, so using the Vertex toolkit. It comes as a, as a class library. It is called Gatelin. And has been just recently uh, open sourced. So basically, you want to build one of these performance server. Uh, the fact is that you have clients on one side, backends on the other side. And the basic, most basic feature is, of course, routing. You want to route requests uh, to the appropriate destination. So uh, routing is one of the, of the feature. You will have, um, so the communication happens only on HTTP. It's mostly JSON REST, but it can also be other kind of resources. We have signature pictures, uh, media files for the post buses, any kind of, uh, of resources. Of course, backends can also uh, perform requests on our servers, and the, so this routing can also go towards uh, the client. So in the case of microservices, we have um, uh, communication in both ways. Another feature of Gatlin is the storage, the resource storage. We have the ability to store um, temporarily data uh, in, a, in an efficient storage based on Redis. Uh, for example, backends want to deliver data to, uh, to uh, the devices, uh, but if the devices make the request, perform the request directly to the backend, the, the load could not be uh, could be too much. So, the backend deliver the data in this resource storage, and uh, the devices can read the data from from there. It ma it makes a, also a decoupling uh, at runtime, so you can have your backends down and the data uh, available anyway. Another way to decouple. Um, <clears throat> the, the source and uh, the client and the server, let's say that, that, are queues. So here the idea is to queue the request, the HTTP request, uh, so that if the backends are slow or if they are uh, not available, the data is still pushed by the devices and the devices is free, is not blocked on this. We also have another feature that are hooks, hooks. These are basically interceptors on, uh, on URLs. And so you can make kind of AOP uh, things. I will show you that. Of course, we have also quite a bunch of other features for enterprise grade production uh, that, uh, that we needed to, to add. I will focus here on the four main features. So routing. In Gatlin, we 
uh, we configure everything just using uh, REST APIs. So um, here you have an administration endpoint, and you will put this kind of configuration to create a route from foo, the foo URLs, uh, to a given backend. So if I put a resource on the foo bar, I try, yes, it works. <laughs> and I can prove that it has been routed by looking in the log file of Gatlin to see that it has already yeah, actually been forwarded. So this is a basic feature. This is like re uh, rewrite rules in, in a reverse proxy. It's quite usual, no magic there. Queuing is something original because we did not want to have uh, an alternative messaging protocol for um, uh, all the asynchronous things we want to, uh, to do between the client and, ser and server. So we actually uh, added a header in the HTTP, in the HTTP request, and this header, XQ, instructs Gatlin to um, um, put the message in the queue and return directly and this, this message was this request, actually, the request is in the queue, the request will be performed asynchronously later on. So immediately if everything goes well, later if the backend is slow or um, unavailable. And this uh, gives uh, a 202 accepted and not okay, because this is the, 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 the status code saying that it will be processed a bit later so the clients are not blocked. It works like this. You have your uh, a node instance, a node uh, receiving the request. This, the event, loops, event loop processes it, stores um, this request in, uh, in the storage, so also this Redis-backed uh, storage. It will send an event on the event bus to the uh, consumer that is uh, actually um, in charge of this of the queue. This is the hello queue in this case. And read the, resource, the, um, the request from the storage and perform it. Uh, let's say it is routed to a, a, a backend. Uh, the queue, you can use, you can have many thousands of queues. This is very lightweight. These are, are basically lists in, uh, in the Redis storage. So the storage as resource storage here. Actually, you will also configure your uh, routing rule with uh, this administration endpoint, and you just mention that you want that a given URL pattern will be mapped to um, the storage. So then when I put, let's say, this, uh, this resource data people join, and try, it works. So there it will be uh, st uh, stored. Let's say that I put some other resources to have a good example. Uh, Alice, Bob, and uh, the thing. Yes, it works. So I will have finally in my storage this data. This uh, is uh, structured hierarchy, in, uh, structured in a hierarchy as, as the, the URL uh, levels. And uh, I can, of course, retrieve the data I just pushed. No wonder here. And um, if I get the intermediate level, this collection level, for example, people, it will actually give me back the um, the list of the sub, of the names of uh, the names of the sub resources. I can also do that on the topmost level, and here I get also the List. Here you see with the trailing slash that they are themselves um, collections, people and things. So one interesting thing also about um, the storage is that the, these collections in the storage, that you can uh, expand them. That means that with this uh, parameter expand one, you jo just don't get um, only the, the, the list of the sub-resources, the name of the sub-resources, but also their content. So here I get uh, everything and it avoids me to make the one plus n 
request to have uh, all my data back. Delete is cascading. So I'll delete people, it will delete everything under. And collections cannot be empty. You have seen those collections have been created uh, dynamically and they cannot be empty. So if I delete it, everything, my storage is clear again. We also have expiration capabilities in the storage. You can set a header to say how long a resource should exist and it will disappear automatically. It is very practical for temporary data that we want to deliver to devices, for example. Hooks is also an interesting feature, mostly in the case when we want to integrate microservices together. Uh, here I have a chat room called chat. And let's say I have a microservice that is interested in, in what happens in this, in this uh, chat room. So it will configure a, a hook, a listener hook. It will, this will intercept the, the requests. And so it will, um, uh, when a request will happen on this chat room, this will also route on this destination. Let's say I have this chat room as a, um, uh, as a map to the storage. So when I put something, uh, a message in this chat room, it will be written in the storage, as I have shown before. And actually, it will also be forwarded to the hook that has been uh, defined by John, probably. The, the name John here is actually an, an identifier for the hook itself. So you can uh, delete hook, so you can refer to the, to the hooks afterwards if you if you, if you need that. So these are the features of Gatlin. We needed to have them to build the, uh, our communication server. And uh, these are the main, the main things that we, that we use. And we thought that it can be uh, interesting to share. Um, you can have a look on the GitHub account. So Swiss Push, Swiss Push is the organization where we, uh, as Swiss Post, publish um, the uh, open source stuff. And you can have a try. You will see that the documentation is not yet complete. We wanted to have the code there, and uh, we are working on uh, mig migrating the documentation there as well. So you can also come and meet us at the at the booth uh, for. Any questions? We have two minutes for questions. I can see it. Yeah. How many nodes do you need um, for these two scenarios you mentioned? Uh, in the case of the scanners, we had we have three nodes basically. Um, we had we had some some issues at the time and we we added some nodes and they are not required anymore but we have we have three nodes we are comfortable with two but uh just to avoid any slowdowns we have three when we do maintenance work um i i would expect same uh, uh, same setup for the um, uh post auto as well yeah any other question Okay. Oh, thank you very much, Noren. Compliments. Thank you.